Good afternoon, this is Chris Cheney, and I am the owner of Piedmont Iris Farm over in York. And we're a perennial supplier to Lichtenfeldt's Nursery here, and they've asked me to come in and talk about reblooming bearded iris, which is actually where I got started many, many years ago. Um, I've been raising reblooming bearded iris for about 35 years. Back in Pasadena, California, I went to work for a, a nursery right out of college, and they were had a lot of specialty lines they were doing. One of them was um, bearded iris, which we all know about. But they had special ones that also repeat bloom in the fall. And that's kind of, that was intriguing to me. Because they look, they look the same, you can see it right here. They look, they're just regular looking bearded iris. But here it is in mid-November, and they're in full bud and bloom. These just came out of my greenhouse, which is just a covered cold frame. Uh, this week, so this, they're doing their thing, they're in season, and I, I, th I thought uh, it might be best to talk about reblooming bearded iris so we can actually prove that they will rebloom here. So that's, that's why we're doing the talk in November. Um, so, way back in 1984, I got started on a few. I had a friend who had a whole collection of, of different iris that he'd been collecting in his backyard. He was also working at the nursery called Burkhard Nursery, which is no, no more, but um, he got me started on a couple varieties. I took a couple home, played with them, and I realized, yeah, they're, I can see that definitely they're pretty cool to have them bloom more than once once a year, and one of the ones he actually started me on was this one right here, this yellow one, which has been around, I think, since the early 80s. It's called Harvest of Memories, and that that was really where I started. And now we have over 100 varieties of different rebloomers. They're all bearded. We do other iris as well. But what I have here is bearded iris. So I want to talk maybe a bit, little bit about the bearded iris class and what that means. Then I'll talk about some of the varieties. We'll talk about how to plant them, some of the problems they get, how to remedy problems in your yard, things you can do with them, what they like, and then we'll wrap it up. So to get started, um, bearded iris is not a category you, I, like I can't take uh, uh, the variety of sitting here on this table and actually hybridize them and expect to get all all the babies to be rebloomers. It just doesn't work that way. They haven't we haven't been able to isolate what actually makes them rebloom. Now there are tendencies, but I could take these and, and hybridize these and get a thousand seedlings and perhaps only get. 10% that would rebloom, and maybe only one or two percent that would rebloom well, and would be attractive enough or an improvement on existing varieties. And that takes five, six, seven years, and acres and acres of land. It's a big deal to get new ones. So what typically has happened is people hybridize for iris, and then they, they realize almost by mistake when it starts reblooming in September or October. Once the, once the nights get a little cooler, it usually triggers rebloom, and they'll isolate ones that way. Uh, now there are there are three types of, or there's actually three categories of rebloomers, and they're not all the same. So if you go to, um, say, a Home Depot, or you go online and you or, you order reblooming iris online, they won't tell you what category rebloom, rebloomer it is. Um, these here are all either twos or threes. A category one is an iris that might rebloom or probably will rebloom if conditions are perfect, uh, which means there'll be years where they don't rebloom at all. Uh, a category two, like this one here, this is double vision. This is a burgundy with vanilla stripes. It's a tall bearded, which means it gets above 24 inches in the ground, 24 inches and above for the length of the flower stem when it actually blooms. That's called a tall bearded iris. This is a category two, and I've had it in my yard, and it always blooms in October or November, uh, faithfully. Um, and I've got a lot of iris like that. Some of the really unusual colors are, I would say, a category two, uh, which is a consistent rebloom in the fall, and then it also blooms, obviously, in, in May or late April in the spring. A category three, is a reblooming iris that pretty much will rebloom whenever the the rhizome is big enough. And this yellow one and this purple one are both category three. 
which means they rebloom any time of the year. So I've had iris blooming in December, if it's a mild enough fall. Anywhere from August through December, based on the weather. And then they start, as soon as the spring gets warm enough, they start pushing buds again. So ideally, you want to get ones that are category three. We just don't have that many that are that good. But I have probably 10 that are cat three. And uh, I've got two here, the purple and the yellow. I've got some other ones here that are all cat twos. Now you see down here below in front, these are shorter and the flowers are smaller. These are called standard dwarf bearded iris. So they're bearded iris, but they're dwarfs and they're, they're again, they're rated on their height. So pretty much anything that blooms out under 12 inches is considered a dwarf bearded. And often they're great rebloomers. I, these are both cat threes. I've got orange ones and yellow ones and white ones. And I, I like these around my trees. I've got them around my dogwoods in my front yard uh, that uh, really, really show off. And they, get, they form really, really thick clumps when they bloom. You just get a solid mass of blooms in the spring and you get sporadic bloom in the summer even. Um, so the standard dwarf bearded, um, there's two examples here. This here, this white one, is actually what's called an intermediate bearded. This is called loho silver. And that's a 15 to 18 inch when it gets going. And it's this is a cat three on steroids. So this white one here, a loho silver, pretty much blooms nonstop, except for the dead of winter when it's too cold and it shut it. When it, we can start getting hard freezes, it'll shut it down. But it can rebloom pretty much any time during the year. But this is an intermediate bearded, so you know, maybe 18 inches is the top on that one. There's one category between, which I don't have any rebloomers here, between intermediate and tall bearded. So um, ideally, uh, you're going to plant these things in the full sun. Um, bearded iris are such that uh, you can actually kill them with kindness. So what happens here in the south, and they, I, the, their, their favorite place is a dry, low humidity environment where um, they get maybe gravelly soil and uh, they have a dry summer. Cooler nights will trigger a rebloom pretty much year-round. So um, coastal California, L.A. even, these things um, really, really perform well. Here in the Carolinas, you have to know a couple of things about them to keep them happy. Uh, as far as bearded iris go, I want to talk about how to plant them next. Um, I do something pretty radical, which I wouldn't recommend with most plants you buy from, from Lichtenfeld. So you're not going to want to do this probably anything except bearded iris. I honestly, I mean, if I, if I buy one, like if you come in this week and uh, buy these iris, just enjoy them in the pots. Let them bloom out. When the bloom die, dries up and the stalk starts to die down, you can cut it down. And what, what I would do, and this is pretty radical, is I, I, would, take the, I would take the iris and I would pop it out of the pot. I would take all the dirt off the roots, totally bare root it. So you see the rise of here, I've exposed, I've, I've dug the dirt away a little bit because they tend to pull themselves down. And when you plant it, you want to reset it a little higher. So when you plant it, you want to see this exposed to the sun and uh, plant it maybe uh, with a third of it out of the ground. You don't, you don't bury this. If you bury this whole crown right here, and very deep, which is maybe the tendency. You might, you might think that's what you should be doing because it makes it more stable. It'll quickly root in. You want this exposed, it'll reset itself at the level it wants to be. And it'll kind of grow along the top, just barely submerged in the soil. And we grow it in a medium that's really fast draining because the bearded iris don't like a lot of moisture around the crowns. Unfortunately, in the Carolinas, we get a lot of rain, a lot of humidity. So one of the things you want to do that, that helps that is when you don't plant it with any kind of planting mix, you want your native clay. They love the clay. They do great in clay. If you have sandy soil or bull tallow, they'll grow in that. I've got them in my house. Right next to the house, they've got bull tallow um, under the foundation of my house. 
They're fine there. As you go down further away from my house, we got the red clay. They do fine there. Um, but ideally, you don't have to have any kind of planting mix. You just, I take a shovel, a spade, and I just, I just cut, I push the spade into the ground. I work a hole maybe this wide, maybe six inches wide, and work the shovel back and forth, tuck the roots in, plant it where this is exposed, step on the hole, push the dirt back around, leave this exposed in the clay, in the native soil, and that's it, you're done. You don't also really want to have these under sprinklers. Uh, if you have under sprinklers, if you, let's say you have a flower garden that you have, you want to put them in your flower garden, you definitely want to plant it the way I said. Uh, you don't want to have any mulch around the iris, which is maybe counter, uh, counterintuitive again, but you don't want anything that holds moisture. So just plant it in the full sun. A sloping area is fine. Honestly, when, I, when people ask me, um, Where's the best place to plant them? Somewhere, somewhere in the yard that's neglected, that doesn't have sprinklers, the sun can bake it. It can take the cold. These things are hardy to minus 20, minus 30 degrees in the ground. So no winter damage is ever gonna really hurt them. A neglected dry spot is ideal, which is uh, pretty amazing since they're so beautiful. Um, they're really one of the easiest things you can grow in your yard if you just don't fuss over them and you put them just in a nice, native dry spot where they can just do their thing. Uh, you ideally you want to uh, put some high phosphate fertilizer. If you do an all-purpose like a garden fertilizer for tomatoes and pansies and petunias and you do a fertilizer that has a fairly high amount of nitrogen in it, you're going to kill the bloom. Iris don't want a lot of nitrogen. You could literally only feed it bone meal or just straight phosphate and they will bloom like crazy and grow great. They don't, so, but bulk food is typically like a two, 10, 10. So only 2% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus and 10% potassium. So we use that at our nursery. We actually use a 5, 10, 10 because we're trying to grow them a little faster. But uh, a bulk food or bone meal, a pre-plant fertilizer, all these things are in the same category, high phosphorus, low nitrogen. Um, I would recommend also using that a couple times a year. You don't put it right on the crown because it's fairly salty. It'll, it can damage the, the rhizome and the crown of the plant. So up, sprinkle it around maybe six, eight, ten inches away from the crown of the plant. The water will take, and the roots will find the nutrients. You don't have to have it right on top of the plant. Um, so as far as planting them, that's pretty basic. Uh, very Fairly easy, but it, if you take the step to bare root them, it may, it may, you may think you're going to lose them or they're going to stress, but in two months' time, they'll be better off and beyond what you would have had if you just take, if you try to take the root ball and keep it nice and perfect and plant in the ground. It'll grow, but very quickly, it will actually grow faster the way I've described it. Um, one of the problems with bearded iris here in the south is like the humidity, like I mentioned already. Um, they don't tend to get iris borers, which is a problem in the Midwest and the Plain States, even out in the Intermountain West. But they do get uh, Irwinia, which is a soft rot bacteria problem. Their, their rhizome was full of starch, and you probably have all lost a cucumber or a potato in the fridge. They turn mushy and slimy and smell like rotten fish. That's the same organism that can get into these. And that is something I want to talk about today. We spent many years trying to figure out how to deal with Irwinia here in the Carolinas because it really is the number one problem for iris. And I'm going to give you guys a scoop on it that even other growers don't know about that we have uh, kind of discovered through trial and error and through percentages and working with it and for a, a person who is at home and you, don't, you can't get uh, the product we get, which is a commercial grade uh, bactericide, all you got to do is go to CVS or Harris Teeter or Publix and got, get a bottle of peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. And um, based on the rates, um, what you want to do, if you, if you see some rot going on, or you, if, you, if you notice it's kind of mushy, or if you, even on the stem, 
I've seen that where it's rains. It, you get a spell where it's 90 degrees and it's raining every night. And if, if these things are blooming, you can actually get or winning a rot to start in the bloom and go right down the stem, and it can actually rot out the crown. I've seen it happen. The thing to do with that is to treat it with hydrogen peroxide. And so right out of the bottle is way too strong. It'll damage the plant. Um, the rate you want to do is about 0.1%. And I'm not sure that all peroxides bought at the store are the same rate. So I would say you have to calibrate it. Um, my peroxide in my kit, in my my bathroom is, I think it was three uh, percent. So if you, I did the math on it, and I wanted to say that, basically, if you take a tablespoon of peroxide and a quart of water, you'll end up with about 0.1 percent. And you pour that. Just you can spray it with a spray bottle on the top, so you can just take a watering can and water it into the crown. That will disinfect the. Uh, the roots in the soil and it will actually eradicate the Irwinia. So if you get a really, really wet spell or you see a problem, peroxide is your best friend to keep these things happy. Something else that can get in them is cutworms. And they don't generally, they won't kill an iris, but what they can do if they're in a really wet spell, they do the same thing. They create an injury and you end up with the same problem. The Irwinia soft rot gets into the, the, the cutworms will eat right into the crown that's their favorite spot right there, which is the worst spot for this iris to be chewed on. And I've seen them rot out pretty quickly from cutworms. And so if you get a cutworm and you notice some damage, I would definitely treat with the 0.1% peroxide. Uh, it doesn't take a lot, a quart, a quart of peroxide water, diluted the way I suggested, uh, right in the crown and around the root zone, we'll, we'll, we'll clear it up and you won't have to worry about it. Um, probably that season, but I just have to watch them. So peroxide is really something that I would, I would recommend that you do on these. Uh, I get questions on these too. Um, how do iris work as a cut flower? And they work great. Um, you can take them about this stage, as soon as the bud pushes out about this stage. If, you, if I were to pick this, cut it down here, and put this in a vase with maybe just an inch, or, an inch of water. You don't want the water all the way up the vase, up the stem, because that'll rot it too. You just keep the water in the top, I mean the bottom inch or two, of the, um, and watch it. Every single one of these buds, will, it'll progress. You'll get flowers, and it'll, it'll go through about a 10-day cycle. Each flower lasts two or three days, and it'll keep opening, even to the tight ones. So this is about the, the minimum stage. Uh, you can take one that's already open, and this, these flowers will last about two days. I've got one bud left here, we got one here. So you, I mean, if you want an instant bouquet, I understand, that's great. Um, it'll work. But uh, like these, this yellow one here, this yellow one here, all of these, these are perfect stage. This is too tight. If you, op if you were to pick this, the flowers, you can just barely see the double vision, the, the burgundy color bud coming out. I don't think that would open. And like this one right here, and this one right here, the, this stage, they won't open at all. They, they, they might try, you might get one or two blooms, but they just aren't mature enough. So you kind of have to watch it. Now there's one other trick on the bearded iris. Indoors, if they, they don't dry and they, they don't go through the same process as they do in the garden. And when this flower shrivels up, I don't think I have any flowers that are really shriveled up here. This one is starting to close up, this little guy here. If this was indoors in about three days, this will actually turn kind of mushy and it'll start dripping. And it'll drip a black ink-like liquid onto the surface. And I've, I had it stain my altar, uh, my hearth in my, my fireplace. I had to repaint the whole top shelf because these things drip. So what you do, when the flower closes up, you can just snap the flower right off and you can leave the stem and leave the rest of the, the buds to keep opening. These things snap off just with your fingers. If you take it, snap it off, they snap off very easily. And that way you can enjoy the as a cut flower and not have any kind of a, a staining going on on your tables or your countertops or wherever you might have them. So, But uh, other than that, they're really, they're easy as a cut flower, they're great. Of course, the iris have 
varying levels of fragrance. These all smell like an iris, what you, you would expect. Some are more fragrant than others. This Harvest of Memories is super fragrant. I've got a few other ones. I think I have, um, it's over here somewhere, this one right here. This is called Unchained Melody, it's a white, and it's just starting to pop. I probably wait two days to pick that stem. This is probably the most fragrant iris we have. I mean, you, you could pick that and you put it in your room, you're gonna smell it anywhere in the room, in your house. The fragrance does come out really nice and strong, especially the first several days when you pick them. So, as a cut flower, uh, they're great. So there's a few more things I want you to consider when you're planting bearded iris in your garden. Um, I get this question a lot. My iris isn't blooming, it's a beautiful clump, all these wonderful leaves, what's wrong? And typically it's one of several things. First thing I would consider is how much sun is it getting? If it's in a fairly shaded spot, you got a tree nearby or it's really close to the house, you got a big bush, shading it, you only get a few hours of sunlight, they're not gonna bloom very well or bloom at all. Um, if you want it to bloom, maximum bloom, and really, really do well, you need at least five hours of direct sun a day. That, I say that's the bare minimum to really get these things to perform properly. So too much shade is a problem. Uh, another thing, like I mentioned earlier, is nitrogen. If you feed it and feed it and get, you can get all this wonderful growth from the bearded iris, especially in the spring. You're out there, you're just, you're just fertilizing the whole garden and you dump a bunch of nitrogen-based fertilizer around an iris, it will actually abort the blooms. And I've seen them, you think you have a flower bud that starts to push and it just drops them. And it just puts all this growth on and it's, it's like, I don't need to bloom this year. I got all this wonderful fertilizer. I'm just gonna grow leaves and they will do that. So too much nitrogen uh, will also cause these things to not bloom. Um, too wet is another problem that uh, I've seen it, if you keep them really wet, um, you're gonna end up with a situation where the roots are not uh, really the happiest underneath the soil. You wouldn't know that unless you dug it up. But if these are really, really wet, they won't bloom very well as well either. And the, the fourth thing is, I say about every five to six years, you're gonna have to dig up your iris clumps. One of these, this one fan, you can't really see it, but it's already pushing a whole series of pups for the next, the next push will go in different directions. You'll end up with five or six fans. Then after, after the next year, you'll end up with 25 fans. And then after that, you get a 50 fans or hundred fans. And after five or six years, you can get a clump. And we do this for stock plants. We'll let them set for five years, dig up one clump. We can get nearly a hundred plants sometimes from if, it, if it's grown well. Um, the only thing is when they get that crowded and they get in the, the ground that long, they don't bloom as well. And so it's best that I, we dig them up. Uh, you can give them to friends, give them to neighbors, throw them away, whatever you want to do, spread them around your yard. That's a common thing people want to do. You can take one of each, if you're patient, in five years, you could have thousands of iris in your yard. You take 10 different plants, one each, you could have a thousand iris in five years if you are on top of it. Um, so when they get crowded, what we'll do is we'll dig up a whole clump and take the best, you know, three really strong fans that haven't bloomed yet and plant them all facing out in a triangle and then just replant in the same spot and then start over again. Dig them some bone meal, give them a lot of phosphorus and the whole process will start over. You could even just take one fan. But being too crowded and being in a spot for a very, very long time, you end up they just, the bloom will start to decline. It's like, why aren't my iris blooming? Well, they've, they've gotten just too crowded. So it's okay to dig them up and, and be rough with them. Now, the books will tell you to do that in the summer. Iris hybridizers, mail order places where you buy iris online will typically ship about July 1st through about August 15th, maybe late August, and then they're done. So you might think, well, the best time to dig my iris is in July. And I found here in the Carolinas, because of the humidity and the rainfall and the high heat, Erwinia, which is the bacterial soft rot, which again is the number one enemy of iris here. 
is just raging. It's, a, it's, a, it's the ground, the, the plants, the entire environment is full of Erwinia because of the, the environment here is so humid and wet, it just is loving it. It's breaking down plant material all the time. It's doing its job. And so we've actually had problems with that. If you, want to, if you really want to dig your iris in your garden and you, you just have to do it in the summer, I guarantee you, you're going to have to use the peroxide. And maybe even every week or so until the, the iris will heal. So what we do, and I've tried this out just to experiment. None of the books say to do it, but we dig them up in the winter. Or even once we get a few nights in the 30s, the Erwinia will actually go to sleep. And it's the same reason that you're going to prune your fruit trees, your roses, your grapevines, why you're told to prune them around Christmas time or first of the year, because it's been sufficiently cold enough that the Erwinia goes dormant. It completely goes dormant. It won't infect anything. So what we'll do is we'll dig them up, and we've divided iris in January, and I don't have to. I don't have to worry about treating them for with peroxide, because your winnie is dormant, and we just we just cut them. You shave them nice with a nice sharp blade. Get a nice smooth cut. We'll put them right into a, a pot again, and make sure they don't freeze too hard. We'll keep them covered in greenhouse or coal frames or with blankets on. But um, we don't lose anything. We we could plant thousands of iris and not have one iris rot. Where if we do it in the summer. Um, we're going to be fighting the rot and the decay continually. So when you do get to the place where you want to divide your iris, uh, I would recommend you doing it, doing it in the winter. Um, it wouldn't hurt to if you dig them up, slice them, set, set them on your kitchen counter for, or your garage for a couple of days to give the cut a little bit of time to heal. But you don't really have to if you do it in the winter. If you do it in the summer, I actually recommend you, you cut them bare root them, leave them sitting on the garage shelf or your, even your kitchen counter for about a week to give that cut sufficient time to, to callus off and dry off so that it's much less likely to rot. But again, um, you can cheat the whole system by using peroxide. So that is, that is the trick. So regarding bearded iris, I think the, really the only way to go is re-bloomers. Um, we have I know you can go online, or you, can, you probably see some really fancy, highly ruffled iris that are just gorgeous. And we have re-bloomers in that category now that are super, super fancy. Um, I don't have them with me right now because uh, I just had to bring ones that were blooming this week. But um, they come in all the colors. Iris literally means rainbow in uh, ancient Greek language and in Spanish. In Portuguese, iris means rainbow. And they named them iris because they come in a rainbow of colors. There isn't a color that isn't represented in iris. We have white, we have lavender, we have blue, we have purple, we have red, we have orange, we have yellow. We have even a brown reblooming iris. Um, so waiting for the first black one. But so you see colors here that are more traditional, but you come in and I want to talk to the st staff here at Lichtenfels. We have orange and we have multicolors, we have reds, we have golds, we have browns that aren't blooming right now, but we have any color of iris you wanted that might want, you might want to put in your yard as a rebloomer, except for black. So be sure and consider bearded iris, reblooming bearded iris in your garden. And I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you.